Hi, and welcome back to Lisa's Stamp Studio. I'm gonna teach you a drapery fold today, which is a beautiful pleated fold for the front of your cards. This pattern is specific to a card layer of four inches by five and a quarter. And I have a free template for you down below. So make sure you scroll down below the video description and click on the link that will navigate you over to my blog post. While you're there, you'll see the pictures, the cutting dimensions, and all the supplies that I've used as well. I'll be demonstrating the traditional drapery fold with you today, but I also have a variation that I want to share with you. And specifically, today's video is to talk to you about using designer series paper with a direction for your drapery folds. If you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, I would love to invite you to do so. Click the subscribe button and next to it, click that bell icon and the word all so that you'll receive notifications when I'm live right here on YouTube, as well as when I share a new video. Let's head over to the stamp table and let's get started on today's project. I'm using a piece of designer series paper from the Forever Greenery designer series paper pack. And like almost all the Stampin' Up! designer series papers, they are double-sided, giving you lots of options. The typical drapery fold is usually using designer series paper that does not have a direction. But today I wanna to teach you how to use papers that do have a direction because it tends to be a little bit tricky. I had to learn the hard way, so I'm hoping that my tips are going to help you as well. This designer series paper is cut four and three quarters of an inch by 10. Because we're gonna be using a designer series paper with direction, it's gonna be important for us to flip it over to do our markings because otherwise we'll end up with a mirrored image. I'm gonna be using the large grid sheets. I love these because there's a ruler on both sides and we're gonna do some marking first. I'm turning this so that the four and three quarters inch mark is here across the bottom. I'm lining up the designer series paper in the corner and at the three quarter of an inch mark, I'm going to make a line. Then we are going to turn it and we are gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. Now I realize that these are not going to line up. They are actually opposite one another. So at the three quarter inch mark, we're gonna make another line. Since I know those marks are gonna be difficult for you to see, I'm gonna go ahead and use my Sharpie marker just for the demonstration and add black marks at both of those three quarters of an inch marks. So it'll be easier for you to follow me when I do the scoring. I have my Stampin' Trimmer here, which includes both a scoring and a cutting blade. And I love that they navigate up and down out of the way so that you can keep them both on the track at the exact same time. You'll notice that those two black marks are here and here, upper right and lower left. You'll wanna check your designer series paper to make sure that it's going in the right direction. So I'm looking to see that my pattern is facing up and I'm keeping those points in contact and I'm gonna line up one of those black marks here at the top of the trimmer, and then I'll turn this so that you can see a little bit better. And I'm gonna line up the other one here at the bottom end of this track. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna close this. The great thing about this trimmer is you can actually see through the clear cutting guide. Once you have those lined up, you just simply take your blade and slice. This is now gonna give you two independent pieces. When you flip it over, you're gonna have one piece here at the top where the direction is going to be going in the right way. You'll have the widest end on one side. Remember that this designer series paper is patterned so that the other piece is going to be upside down, but don't throw it away because you can certainly use it in this direction, which is going to give you the drapery or the pleats on the opposite side. Going back to the trimmer, we're gonna do some score lines. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the extended arm on my trimmer. You're gonna start on the widest end of the paper and you're gonna make the first score line at two inches. I love the straight edge here across the top because that's gonna ensure that my paper is going to be straight. So at the two inch mark, I'm gonna line that up and we are going to score. Then we'll move over to three inches and we'll score. Moving over to five inches, we'll score again. Again at six inches and then eight inches and nine inches. So these are one inch increments and then a two inch increment and then that pattern repeats. You're going to take the very first score line, which is a two inch mark, and you're going to fold in. And then the next one is going to fold back. So this is an accordion type crease. And then you're gonna repeat that on the remaining folds across the designer series paper, which will end you up with this. Now the proper drapery fold, as the name calls, will leave you areas of the other designer series paper showing, which is really a beautiful presentation. But I wanna share something with you. If you flip it over, not only do the pleats go on the opposite side of your card, but you're gonna notice that you don't see the other paper peeking through. This is a great tip if you have a designer series paper 
with two opposite color schemes or patterns that would not look good from the front of the paper. I also have a completed card to share with you using this variation. I have my silicone craft sheet here, which I absolutely love. Adhesive, liquid glue, and hot glue will not stick to this. I'm going to take my fold and I'm going to flip it over. I like to leave the folds all creased up and I like to be able to apply my adhesive in the direction that these should lay so that I don't have to worry about this buckling. I'm using Stampin' Seal Plus, which is a very strong adhesive. I'm going to lay this right across the top of all those creases. The next step is to add these pleated folds to a piece of 4x4 four four Pear Pizzazz cardstock. So I'm going to align the left-hand side so that the point or the end on the bottom left is aligned and mirrored to the corner of the cardstock. And then you're just going to mimic that across the top and then press across the area you have adhesive. I have an additional layer here, which is 4 and 1 eighths by 5 and 3 eighths. This piece will eventually get bordered here, leaving a nice border of the white around the bottom section. But I like to stamp my greeting first. I'll be using Garden Green ink, which is one of the coordinating colors in that designer series paper. My stamp greeting is Love and Laughter Forever After, and I thought this was perfect for Valentine's Day, anniversaries, or weddings. It comes from the stamp set called Forever Fern, and you'll be able to find this in the current annual catalog. The entire suite of products is stunning. I'm going to go ahead and ink up that greeting in the garden green, and I'll stamp that here near the top center. I'm going to slide over now to that panel with the drapery fold, and I'm going to flip that over, and we're going to add adhesive along the back side. Now that we have our adhesive on the back, let's go ahead and mirror this at the bottom portion underneath the greeting, and I'm looking to leave a small margin of that white cardstock on those three sides, and then we'll press that in place. The next step is to go ahead and add our ribbon. This gorgeous reversible ribbon gives you lots of options for color. I'm gonna use the shimmer side up today, and the easiest way to adhere this is with glue dots. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull back one of the glue dots here, and then I'll adhere the end of the ribbon to that glue dot, which will lift it. I'm gonna lay this now over the top of this area. Now you can place the ribbon right here across the edge, or you can maneuver it up, it's entirely up to you. Since I know I'm gonna embellish this area today, I'm gonna to move my ribbon right along the top of my designer series paper, pressing that glue dot to the back. I'm gonna do the same thing now with the other side by adding a glue dot to this raw end. By not wrapping the ribbon all the way around the card base, it's gonna save you at least four inches on every single card. We're not gonna to wanna to tack down the center on this just yet. Before we go on to embellishing it, let's go ahead and adhere it to the base of our card. This is Garden Green cardstock, again, coordinating with that designer series paper. It is cut four and a quarter by 11. I've scored it in half already at the five and a half inch mark, and I'm just using my bone folder for that nice crease. I'm gonna come back over to this layer, and we're gonna add adhesive to the back side. Now that my adhesive has been applied, let's go ahead and center this on the front of the card base. My next step was to add these beautiful foil leaves, and this comes from the Forever Greenery Specialty Designer Series paper. These are laser cut and ready for you to use. What I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna cut the stems off of these so that they'll fit a little better. I've got my paper snips here, and I'm gonna cut off one end, and then I'm gonna use a glue dot to adhere these. Now, of course, you can use liquid glue. I just find this a lot easier and a lot faster. Placing that glue dot here on the back, I'm looking to align the center of my card, and then I'm gonna place that here. I'll cut off the tip on this one as well, and I'll be placing another glue dot. I'm looking to make sure I place that glue dot in an area where there's a little bit of stability for it, and then we're gonna meet this here in the center. I've chosen two other of these foil leaves. This one has a little bit more of an open pattern, and this one's gonna be positioned a little bit further up. And then my last leaf is here. One thing about these leaves I love is the other side is white. So if you're using dark cardstock, these are quite versatile. We'll add another glue dot here. And this time I'm gonna go ahead and position this one a little bit more downward. My next step was another piece of ribbon. This is another five inches, just like the one we've used here. But this one I'm actually going to slip underneath the original one, which is one reason why I didn't place any adhesive there to begin with. Now this is reversible ribbon. So one side has that shimmer and the other side has this beautiful jade color. But I want my shimmer side to show. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this ribbon and I'm gonna manipulate it. Now you go ahead and leave it like this or you can create another knot make sure that you pull it very, very tightly. I'm gonna come in with my scissors now and I'm gonna give those ends a slight trim. And you're gonna see that this is kind of loose. And I'm concerned that this may be moving as it comes in and out of the envelope. So I wanna teach you a great little card trick. 
Go ahead and reveal one of your glue dots. I'm using my take your pick tool. I've attached the paper piercing tool attachment. Love the putty tip for those small pieces of paper or sequence. But this tool allows me to ball up that glue dot rather small, helps me to pick it up as well. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to position that right behind that knot and I am going to press that in place. What it's done now is it's secured this area so that it won't move. My final step was to play up those beautiful gold embellishments and I've chosen the gold glitter enamel dots. They already have glue dots on the back which make them very easy to use. Love that little sparkle that they have inside of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna place several here on the card base. Working in this area down here at the bottom, that's a little bit on the plain side, then I'll take one of the smaller embellishments and I'll place that here. I always like to work in a triangle formation when I'm using the embellishments on my card. So here's the card we created with the traditional drapery fold with patterned paper that has a direction. But you'll recall that I said I had another card for you that uses a variation. Remember how I said you shouldn't throw that other piece away? An entirely different piece of designer series paper. And when I realized I had cut it wrong, I thought, you know what? Let's just flip it over. It doesn't have a little peek through drapery folds here, but it has these beautiful pleats. Look at the texture on this. Isn't this fun? This is from a stamp set called Snailed It. I bought it as a bundle, which will save you 10% as well if you love it as much as I do. That'll give you the stamp set and the coordinating dies for this adorable card. Great again for Valentine's Day, thinking of you, get well, wedding or anniversary. And right now it's a great time to shop because it's Stampin' Up's largest sale of the year called Celebration. For every $50 and product that you spend, you'll be able to choose a free product from the exclusive brochure of your choice. And that's every $50 between now and February 28th, 2021. If you don't already have a demonstrator and you are interested in receiving copies of the current catalogs, I would love to send them to you. Head over to lisasstampstudio.com and click on catalogs. If you have enjoyed today's video, would you please give it a thumbs up here on YouTube, which is a like, it certainly helps. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day.